One afternoon, by the banks of a brook, sat Alice and her sister, who was reading a book. Dinah, the cat, sat and listened too. It was a history book, which may have been true, but it was so boring that it made Alice tired. Can you imagine an entire book without one picture inside? Alice yawned once or twice, and then felt a heaviness creep over her eyes. Her sister's voice kept on droning, and Alice's eyes started closing. And as you know, once your eyes are closed, it's not that hard to start to doze. And once you're asleep, it often seems quite easy to start dreaming dreams. And dreams take you to Wonderland, which can be a difficult place to understand. For it's such a strange experience that nothing in it seems to make sense. Yes, in Wonderland, things have a habit of turning out strangely. Take, for instance, the white rabbit with a pocket watch and a very smart jacket who ran toward Alice nervously and passed her, muttering anxiously, Oh dear, oh dear, I'm late, I'm late. Alice wanted to ask him where he was going at such a rate, but the rabbit just paused to look at the time and with a blink of pink eyes said, Oh my dear, I'm, I'm late, so late. And I've such an important date. I've no time. I must hurry. Can't stop now. Very sorry. Off he ran through a field and disappeared behind a tree. Alice started to follow him, burning with curiosity. Suddenly, he appeared again, sat down, got up and raced. Then, as Alice followed him, he was gone without a trace. She was wondering where he had got to when she suddenly slipped and fell and found herself tumbling down a deep, dark well. It was actually a rabbit hole whose sides were wet and clammy and cold. Alice kept falling down, 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 deeper and deeper underground. And while she was falling, she was able to think... Who will give Dinah, my cat, milk to drink? If Dinah were here, it would be so nice. Although I can't see any mice, perhaps Dinah could catch a bat? Do cats eat bats, or do bats eat cats? And as she was wondering and making believe, she landed with a thump on a pile of dry leaves. Alice was not hurt at all. She looked up and heard the white rabbit call, my ears and whiskers. Oh, dear, I'm so late. No time for discussions. I simply can't wait. Alice followed and found herself in a hall with a low ceiling and doors along the walls. All the doors seemed to be locked, but after trying them all, Alice stopped at a tiny little door which she opened. But through the door was a passage, and the passage led to a beautiful garden with fountains and flower beds. Alice managed to squeeze in her head, but her shoulders wouldn't go through at all. Oh, how she longed to get out of the hall. But she thought to herself, what use is it to push my head through if my shoulders don't fit? How nice it would be if I could shrink a bit. It was then that she noticed a one-legged table, and on the table was a bottle. And on the bottle was a label, and on the label were written the words, Drink me. What else can I do, thought Alice. I'll drink it and see. Alice opened the bottle and took a sip. After just one taste, she licked her lips. The drink had the flavor of a turkey roast, pineapple custard, and hot buttered toast. It didn't take long to finish the drink, and suddenly Alice began to shrink. Soon she was extremely small, and everything around her seemed so tall. The table was now as high as a hill. Being so small made Alice feel ill. The ceiling now stretched into the sky, 
And Alice felt so sad, she began to cry. It was then that she noticed that under the table was a box made of glass, and it too had a label. This label read, Eat Me, and inside the box, Alice could see a currant cake. She took a bite and felt herself growing in height. Curiouser and curiouser, said Alice in surprise, for now she was extremely high. She looked way down and could just see her feet. Poor feet, she said. When shall we ever meet? Soon her head was touching the ceiling of the hall, and Alice had grown to be nine feet tall. Now I shall never get through the door, said Alice with a sigh, and she felt so unhappy, she began to cry. Unhappy Alice continued to weep, and her tears as they fell made a pool inches deep. Suddenly, down the hall, the white rabbit ran, carrying a pair of kid gloves and a fan. He was muttering to himself, Oh, the Duchess, oh, I'm so late. The Duchess hates to have to wait. Alice wanted to ask him for help, but as soon as he saw her, he leaped away with a yelp. Terrified, down the hall he ran, leaving behind the gloves and the fan. Alice picked up the fan and started fanning away and thinking how strange everything was that day when she suddenly noticed that she was shrinking once more and just in time threw the fan to the floor. Ooh, what luck, she thought. I would have shrunk altogether. And she was on her way to the door to see whether she could finally reach the garden when, splash, she tripped and fell straight in to a lake of salt water almost up to her chin. Her first idea was that she was in the sea, but she soon realized that this could not be. And then she understood, although it sounded queer, that she was swimming in a pool of her own tears. Alice heard something splashing like a hippopotamus, but then she remembered how small she was and saw that it was only a mouse who had slipped in like herself and couldn't get out. To make a conversation, she told him about her cat. But the mouse turned pale and said, Don't talk of things like that. Soon, other animals were filling up the lake. And what a noise they started to make. Alice saw a parrot, a dodo, and a young eaglet. And some other strange creatures, all of them wet. Soon the lake was so full there was no room for more and they all swam with Alice back to the shore. They were all soaking wet and tried to decide what the best way would be for them to get dry. Then the dodo said, In this sort of case, the way to get dry is a caucus race. What is that? asked Alice curiously. Well, said the dodo, let's do it and see. He marked out a race course, and the race began. The strange group of creatures ran and ran. It was a very unusual race indeed, for they could stop and start as they pleased. After half an hour of running around, everyone was dry, and they sat down on the ground. As they were talking of this and that, Alice happened to mention her cat. As soon as the word cat slipped out, all the birds and animals started shifting about. The mouse who had come back now left in a huff, and the old magpie said, I think that's quite enough. A canary turned to her children and said, Come along, dears. You should all be in bed. One after another, they all went home. And soon, poor Alice was left on her own. She felt so lonely that she began to cry when... 
who should happen to patter by? That's right, the white rabbit, of course, who was muttering, the duchess, oh, my dear, pause. Where could I have left them? Where can they be? By the way he was looking, Alice could see that he was searching for his fan and gloves on the ground. And to help, Alice also started hunting around. But the rabbit called out in an angry tone, Mary Ann, what are you doing here? Go home and bring me a pair of gloves and a fan. Alice was so frightened that off she ran. The rabbit had thought that she was his maid. She wanted to explain, but was too afraid. She ran till she reached a house with a sign that read W Rabbit and walked inside. Alice quickly walked up to the second floor and there on the table was what she was looking for. She took the gloves and the fan and was about to go down when something else on the table made her turn round. It was another bottle with the words, Drink me. And Alice, who was tired of being small, drank it just to see if it might possibly make her grow. Well, it did. But just how much, she couldn't know. She grew so tall, she had to kneel on the floor. And then she grew bigger and put one foot through the door. Soon there was less room, and one arm went through the window. Her head hit the ceiling, and she didn't know where else she could go if she continued to grow. But at last, when she was completely stuck, the growing seemed to have finally stopped. Now the rabbit had come after his fan and called from the outside, Mary Ann! Mary Ann! But when, through the window, he saw a massive arm, he was afraid that it would do him harm and threw some little pebbles upstairs. Alice called down, Stop it! Don't you dare! Some of them had hit her in the face. But as they lay on the floor, they turned into cakes. Then a bright idea came into Alice's head. If I eat one of these cakes, she said, it's sure to make some change in my size. And so she ate one, and was not really surprised to find that she was beginning to shrink. For as you know by now, every type of food or drink seemed to make her bigger or smaller, as well, of course, as shorter or taller. Alice, who now was tiny once more, ran down the stairs and out of the door. She was wondering how to get back to her real size when she looked up to see a puppy with enormous eyes trying to touch her with his paw. And although he was playful, Alice quickly saw that if he was hungry, this friendly pup could quite easily eat her up. Playing with him was like playing with a horse, and Alice was terribly frightened, of course. But luckily, soon he was too tired to play. Alice made her escape and ran away. Alice walked on and very soon found herself in a field of huge mushrooms. And on top of the biggest sat a caterpillar who was blue. He looked at her dreamily and asked, Who are you? He was smoking a water pipe, blowing smoke out of his nose. And between each word, he seemed to doze. I hardly know who I am, said Alice, for I always seem to change. Being so many sizes is very strange. Not for me it isn't, said the caterpillar sleepily. Wait till you're a butterfly, said Alice, and then we'll see. Well, uh, what size, asked the caterpillar, do you want to be? I don't care, said Alice, as long as I don't change, you see. No, I don't see, said the blue caterpillar at last, and got down from the mushroom and crawled into the grass. One side will make you taller, the other shorter, he sighed. Of what? wondered Alice, confused inside. And as though the caterpillar had read her thoughts, he sleepily murmured, mm, 
The mushroom, of course. Alice took a bite from the left-hand side, hoping that it would make her grow in size. But instead, she found that she had shrunk so fast that her chin hit her foot with a thump. Keeping her wits about her, she took a bite from the right, and what happened next gave her a terrible fright. For now, her neck stretched into the sky. She couldn't see her shoulders. Her head was so high. A pigeon flew into her face. Snake! It cried. You're all a disgrace. I can't get away from you. I've tried every place. I'm not a snake, Alice cried. So what are you then? Asked the pigeon, as though she had lied. I'm a little girl, answered Alice rather doubtfully. A little girl? Snapped the pigeon. A likely story indeed. And you've never tasted an egg, is what you'll be telling me next. Well, of course I've tasted an egg," said Alice. "What did you expect?" "You see, you are a snake," cried the pigeon triumphantly. "And now we've settled that. Kindly get away from me." Alice walked on, waving her long neck, and wondering what would happen next. From the pieces of mushroom, she took little bites, first from the left and then from the right. And after testing each for a few tries, she managed to return to her normal size. Soon she came to a clearing where a little house stood, and there she saw, running out of the wood, a fish in servant's uniform who approached the house and knocked at the door. It was opened by another servant. Only he was a frog, and Alice watched them all agog. The fish servant handed over an envelope. And the frog servant opened it and read in a croak, "From the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet." The fish servant bowed, and went on his way. Alice walked up and knocked on the door. The frog servant said, "What are you knocking for? Nobody will hear you." He added in a bored voice. As you can see, they're making far too much noise. Just then, a plate came flying out, and from inside the house came curses and shouts. Eventually, she decided to simply walk in, and found herself in the middle of a kitchen. There, on a three-legged stool, sat the Duchess, holding a baby to her breast. Over a potful of soup stood an angry cook, and the room was full of smoke and pepper. Everywhere you looked, the Duchess was screaming, "Too much pepper, you see!" The baby was sneezing constantly. The cook was cursing, and plates were flying, and everyone was screaming and sneezing and crying. Alice decided that she'd had enough of the Duchess's house, and took herself off. Alice was wondering who she could go and see, when she met a Cheshire cat. Grinning up a tree, Alice asked, "Could you tell me, please, where I can go from here?" The Cheshire Cat grinned. "That depends on where you want to get to, my dear." Alice said, "As long as I get somewhere, it doesn't really matter." <laughs> over there lives a March Hare, and over there a Hatter. <laughs> They're both quite mad," the Cheshire Cat added. And then vanished up to his chin, so that all that was left was his curious grin. Well, thought Alice, how about that? I've often seen a cat without a grin, but not a grin without a cat. Soon she came to the house of the March Hare, and sitting at a table in front of the house, were the March Hare, the Mad Hatter, and a sleeping Dormouse. A hatter, by the way, is a man who makes hats. And although they said there was no room, <laughs> down Alice sat.
The hare and the hatter leaned on the mouse in the middle, and then the mad hatter asked everybody a riddle. Why is a raven like a writing desk? I believe, said Alice, that I can guess. The March Hare said, If you know the answer, you should say what you mean. I do, said Alice. At least I mean what I say. And she added, It's the same thing, you see. And the conversation went on in this way until the Mad Hatter took out his watch and asked, What is the date? The fourth, said Alice. Two days late, sighed the Mad Hatter gloomily, and took his broken watch and dipped it in his tea. It was then that Alice noticed that his watch told only the day. What a silly tea party, she thought, and continued on her way. Soon she reached a tree with a door, and walked inside and found herself once more in the long hall with the glass table. And this time she was able to pick up the key, make herself small, open the door, walk through the passage in the wall, and come out on the other side into the beautiful garden, filled with pride that this time she had done everything right. Then she even took another bite of the caterpillar's mushroom and grew to her normal height. In the garden was a rose bush with roses of white, but underneath it, Alice saw a very strange sight. Three gardeners were arguing and painting them red. Then she saw that they weren't real gardeners, but playing cards instead. When they noticed Alice, they bowed low to the ground, and then one, who was listening out, heard a sound. The queen is coming. Let's get in our places. And as quick as a flash, they were lying on their faces. And indeed, Alice could hear many footsteps and turned round to see what would happen next. First came card soldiers walking two by two. Then, ten elegant card ministers who were followed by the royal children. They filled her with delight. Then all the high-born guests came into sight. Soon, walking a little way apart and carrying the king's crown, came the knave of hearts. And bringing up the rear, Alice could see the king and queen of hearts, their majesties. Alice didn't know what to do in such a case. Should she, like the gardeners, lie down on her face? She decided to just stand still where she was. The queen of hearts glared at her, looking very cross. Who are you, child? she asked most severely. My name is Alice, said Alice quite clearly. The queen pointed to the gardeners and asked, And who are those? It's no business of mine, said Alice. How should I know? Off with her head, raged the queen like a beast. Nonsense, said Alice, who was not in the least afraid of a pack of cards. She could blow them all down without trying too hard. The king turned to the queen and in a voice meek and mild said, Please consider, my dear, she is only a child. Now the queen turned her anger on the gardener's three. Turn them over, she ordered, and the knave did so carefully. Get up! screamed the queen. What are you doing here? W well, stuttered the gardeners. We're, we're uh... off with their heads, screamed the queen. Go on. And a moment later, the procession was gone. The gardeners were terrified. They ran straight over to Alice, who cried, You shan't be beheaded. That you shall not. And hid them inside a flower pot. Then three soldiers marched up and wandered around. They saw that the gardeners were nowhere to be found and ran back to the royal company. Well, are their heads off? shouted the queen. And they answered, They've gone, your majesty. Then the queen roared at Alice, Can you play croquet? And Alice shouted back, Yes, I know how to play. Come on, then, screamed the queen. And Alice joined the procession and suddenly met up with the rabbit, who was wearing an anxious expression. 
Alice asked, Where's the Duchess? Shh, whispered the rabbit in distress. The Queen has ordered to chop off her head, and all because the Duchess said... But the Queen now interrupted. Everyone to your places. Get ready to play. And the croquet game got underway. Now, usually croquet is played with a ball. But in Wonderland, they didn't use balls at all. Instead, they used hedgehogs, which rolled around in fright, then refused to stay wound up tight, and now and then tried to run away. And the players? They didn't seem to know how to play. They began hitting each other left and right. While the queen was so angered by the sight that she ordered people's heads off just out of spite. Alice was worried that all this to do would make the queen order her head off too. She got even more worried when the king said that anybody with a body could lose his head. After that, things went from bad to worse. The players bashed the hedgehogs. The queen raged and cursed. Everything fell into total confusion. And soon the queen had ordered so many executions that almost everyone had been sent to jail, which meant that she could hardly fail to win the game easily and loudly claim her victory. Then she and the king, watched by Alice, grandly marched off to the palace. Alice walked on for a little while until a special messenger called her to the trial. What trial, you may ask? Who had misbehaved? Well, as we'll soon see, it was the knave. Alice noticed that the judge was the king and that he looked very bewildering. For he wore a big wig under his crown and tried to look wise as he looked down at the jurors in the jury box who were twelve birds and animals. A very strange lot. The white rabbit opened the trial by blowing his trumpet and reading out in style, The queen of hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole the tarts and took them quite away. The first witness came up to give his evidence, and what happened then made absolutely no sense. None of the witnesses answered the questions. The king kept on making silly suggestions. The queen kept on shouting, Off with his head! And the jurors wrote down everything everyone said. And as the questions and answers flew to and fro, Alice had the feeling that she was beginning to grow. When she was called to the witness stand, she knocked over the whole jury with a wave of her hand. What do you know of this business? asked the king. I, answered Alice, know absolutely nothing. That's very important, said the king with a frown and began to write everything down. The king and the rabbit then started to argue. The knave joined in and Alice grew and grew and began to grow angry with this ridiculous ridiculous trial in which everyone talked nonsense and meanwhile as the silliness grew greater the queen of hearts ordered the knave to be executed for stealing the tarts even though there was still no evidence you can't do that cried alice it doesn't make sense hold your tongue cried the queen turning white i won't cried alice it isn't right the queen turned purple and screamed, Off with her head! But Alice, who was her full size now, angrily said, You're just a pack of cards. I'm not afraid of you. And in an instant, all the playing cards flew into her face. She tried to beat them back, gave a little scream of fright, and awoke in the lap of her sister, who was brushing away some leaves which had fluttered into her face, from some nearby trees.
What a long sleep, said her sister. Where have you been? Oh, said Alice, I had such a strange dream. And she sat up and told her sister everything she remembered, and her sister kissed her and told her to run back to the house for tea. Alice ran off excitedly, trying to remember more of her dream and thinking what a wonderful dream it had been. Next time you dream, and find yourself in places where weird-looking creatures have strange-looking faces, when you wake up, you'll understand that you've just paid a visit to Wonderland.